um, welcome an incredible uh, resource uh, and partner uh, in this community, uh, Marta Vicieto. And you know, Marta is going to tell you um, about one of the projects that she works on, um, which is Access Helps. But I want you to understand that the person you're about to meet is a visionary leader in social justice, economic justice, and small business support. Um, and I hope, Marta, if, if you could, I don't even know everything that you do. If you could be not too shy about talking about the work you do in Urban Impact Lab um, and, and just really just try to give us a full picture of what you do, and then we can talk specifically next about the Access Helps resource. Welcome. Sure. Well. Thank you. And it's it's um, really amazing to see so many familiar faces. Um, so hi to so many of you that I've engaged with at one point or another and often not on the small business space. So this is particularly uh, it's just cool to see um, friends on, on online. Um, congratulations, Dan, for uh, getting up to Congress. Um, I know that you're, you're going to represent Miami small business community amazingly well. And that's really, really exciting. Please tell us how it goes. Um, How do you do yeah. 305? <laughs> Something like that. 305, so, yes, whatever, so, however you do it. <laughs> uh, no, that's really exciting. And I also um, just want to reflect on something you were saying. Uh, Anna is a superstar. We are lucky to work with her. I'm lucky to work with her. Um, and our, you know, our team loves her to death for all the reasons you mentioned. Um, she really is the real deal when it comes to somebody that can move mountains um, and make amazing things happen and just a fantastic partner. So uh, Anna, this is this is clearly your moment and I hope you're soaking it up because it's all true. Um, anyhow, so um, on the slide, uh, there's lots of information. Um, I did in partnership with my team found Access Helps. Um, I, I am really the co-founder of Urban Impact Lab. Uh, Access is a project of Urban Impact Lab. Um, access came about because of the pandemic. Um, we really, you know, if, I don't know if you all had the same situation going on, but in early 2020, we were looking at a pandemic shutdown that was going to be maybe six or eight weeks. Maybe it'll, you know, maybe 10 weeks. It's going to be three months at most of, um, of a shutdown and a situation that we had to deal with. And that's really not what it ended up being. Um, but there were some folks in our community that had the wherewithal to understand that it was going to be a major economic crisis. And so um, uh, with their help, we and specifically City Community Development Fund and Microsoft Philanthropies, um, with their help and support, we stood up access as a way to make sure that Miami's residents, both from the small business end, but also just reg just residents, you know, family members, um, had access to all of the economic resources that were coming down the pipeline um, and, and just we wouldn't miss out. But really our not not just like our big companies and very, you know, with very sophisticated accounting and legal departments that could, you know, go through a PPP application or an SBA um, idle loan application in, in, in no time, but really so our small business community and our, you know, our mom and pops are, you know, the folks on the ground that 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 just, you know, trying to make sure their families um, uh, would thrive through this this situation that they had access to all of those resources and that was the spirit behind which access came about. Um, over the years, what we learned was that the small business community in particular would really benefit from additional access to all sorts of resources. That's something you know, kind of like a, a central place where we where resources um, could be found, and that's what's behind access. Um, there are some other roles I've played in the community. Um, I'm, as a as a friend once called me, I am a transit nut. Um, uh, I do believe in the power of of great mobility, um, and so um, there's an organization, Transit Alliance Miami, um, that I founded. We incubated through Urban Impact Lab as well, and now it's its own standalone 501c3. Um, I don't have much involvement when it's day to day anymore, which to me is is what I really wanted. I, I wanted to give, you know, to bring something, but not necessarily to be the only person um, involved in leading it forward. And so uh, that's a great organization. Um, and yes, I've been involved a couple other things, but if we could go to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about access. Um, just really quickly, the Miami <laughs> DEA, I believe, <laughs> I believe serves a lot of the same uh, regions that this the business owners here are. 
uh, uh, Michael John uh, Green is the new executive director. Is that right? Yeah, I worked with Yes, Eddie. he is. I'm, I'm no longer on the DDA board, um, but yes, Michael John Green is a, he actually was behind the road, the Rise Miami-Dade loan fund that um, uh, Anna mentioned early on. He really understands small business and he, he's, he really gets like the financial pipeline. Um, he's a wonder ad, a wonderful advocate for access to resources and, and specifically access to, uh, to capital. Um, if you haven't uh -huh. engaged with him, I think it would be great. Yeah, so M MJ is the new executive director. The DDA is a good resource for many of you. Uh, it serves a very similar geography to District 5, uh, and it's really dedicated to helping you similarly to elevate D5. So uh, I highly recommend you tap into that resource. Uh, so tell us about Access Helps, another incredible resource. By the way, everybody, uh, uh, Jose, please put the link in the chat. Everyone should sign up for their newsletter. Uh, go ahead. Thank you. Um, so access is, a, so, you know, the, the, the goal behind it is that it's a one-stop shop for resources. Um, what we do on the day-to-day -day is we scour um, uh, online offerings, emails, all, all kinds of notifications that we get, but we also go out and look for resources that are coming at the national level, at the local level, at the state level, um, and figure out which are the ones that are the most, um, that really are going to help. Uh, I don't know if you've had the experience that sometimes you navigate or you know you find something and, and then you realize it's not really for me or it, it's not going to work. So what we try to do is find the things that are the most um, uh, helpful for our local small business community. Um, and then we help try to, you know, we create filters so that if you have particular conditions with your business or you need particular things, you can find um, things like grants, information about loans, uh, information about like small business support classes, all of those things um, via Access Helps. And again, we have the wonderful, uh, just the, the wonderful opportunity to work with the District 5 team specifically on, on Elevate D5. So that's kind of a different role behind the scenes that we play. Um, and, and it's really amazing to see Elevate D5 and the, and the progress that this group, this pro, this program has made in what feels like, I'm sure to Anna feels like a long time, but it's really only two years. And for, um, government work, that's, that's, um, it's a, so much things have happened in what is really a short amount of time. So, but congratulations to all of you and best of luck as you're presenting. And if, um, you know, there's anything that Access can ever support you in please feel free to reach out. Yeah. And thanks again, Dan. You know, I just just to give you a sense of how I use Access Help. So I, um, I had like a little calendar reminder. Uh, first of all, I get their newsletter. <clears throat> and then I have a calendar reminder um, twice a month to just look at their website, at the new grants and resources they're unearthing. Um, if you are a uh, BIPOC woman, <laughs> there's a lot out there, a lot. Um, so I, you, you would be... Honestly, it's like free money um, and you really would be smart. Look, half a business is being smart. Um, so you'd be really smart to be checking this website because it's just there's a lot of organizations that want to give you money, often with very few strings attached so that you can grow your business and support your family and your staff and serve your customers. So um, all of you should be become certified as WBEs, Women Business Enterprises, MBEs, Minority Business Enterprises, whether with the state of Florida with or with the Florida uh, State uh, Minority Supplier Diversity Council. Not only is this um, uh, sometimes a required first step uh, in, in being part of any supplier diversity initiatives, but it will also um, get you business from companies that want to support underserved uh, business owners. Second is you should definitely, um, you know, explore the vendor academy and um, becoming a vendor of the various government entities like the county, like the school district. Um, the largest employer in Miami-Dade County is not a private business. It's not a Fortune 500 company like Ryder. It's the school district. So, you know, they are spending tens of billions of dollars a year. Um, I think the county budget is more than $13 billion. Um, and that's life-changing money if you can get a, a piece of it. I'm a personal testimony to that. And um, and gosh, it's so much better in your hands than in some of the others it ends up in. So so you just got to get smart about it. Um, and and, and uh, sometimes you can work hard 
and sometimes you can work smart.